right, happy March 1st, everybody. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed their day yesterday, their free February 29th, extra day of the year. Um, it is a rainy, crappy day, which in my new life as Michelangelo painting the earth for the phone company, uh, I have nothing outside to do. So I'll be working a lot inside with the books, finding uh, out if jobs are conflicts or no conflicts. No conflicts. I don't have to do anything. Conflict. I have to hook up and paint the ground. But in any case, that's what I'm doing while your kids uh, are in school, learning, hopefully, to become better adult humans. Um, but in any case, we're about to listen to uh, some interesting things about nature and the connectivity between us and other humans, just like animals and how flocks can turn and pods can spin. And everything else in nature is linked, except for us. Um, so enjoy, and uh, I will talk to you in about nine minutes, because that's all YouTube uh, allows me as far as sending from the iPad, it seems. So uh, I'm going to try to wrap it up. Here we go. And uh, from his studies with animals. Take a friend, say show. Where are you? Animals in the SP. Right. And uh, from his studies with animals, um, he's concluded that, uh, and I quote, he wrote, Telepathy usually occurs between animals that are bonded with each other, and that in schools, flocks, herds, packs, and other social groups, telepath telepathic communication may play an important role in the coordination of the activity of the group. Also, at least in birds and mammals, telepathy has to do with emotions, needs, and intentions. Feelings communicated telepathy and telepathically include fear, alarm, excitement, calls for help, calls to go to a particular place, anticipation of arrivals, departures, distress, and dying. And he's also concluded that psi abilities that he's discussed in his work, quote, are better developed in animals than in people. Normally, dogs seem to be the most sensitive, followed by cats, horses, and parrots, with humans trailing far behind. That's pretty fascinating, right, Doc? By the way, this is life at, uh, actually, 45, 48. Um, there's rain on the road, and uh, I am not getting in another accident. And uh, the speed limit there says I can drive as slow as 40 legally, but not faster than 55. So normally this is life at 55, but today it's life at 48. All right, and uh, did you hear that? Dogs mostly but humans far behind. One more time. This is from, uh, I believe, Rupert Sheldrake. And my XM unit is not working. Come on. Really? Wow, that's weird. I'm trying to play it. I just played it, and it is not playing. Is, I can rewind, I can fast forward, and I'm getting nothing. You know. Animals in the SP, yeah. and uh, from his studies with animals, um, he's concluded that, uh, and I quote, he wrote, Telepathy usually occurs between animals that are bonded with each other, and that in schools, flocks, herds, packs, and other social groups, telepa telepathic communication may play an important role in the coordination of the activity of the group. Also, at least in birds and mammals, telepathy has to do with emotions, needs, and intentions. Feelings communicated telepathy and telepathically include fear, alarm, excitement, calls for help, calls to go to a particular place, anticipation of arrivals, departures, distress, and dying. And he's also concluded that psi abilities that he's discussed in his work, quote, are better developed in animals than in people. Normally, dogs seem to be the most sensitive, followed by cats, horses, and parrots, with humans trailing far behind. That's pretty fascinating. I had not heard of that. Yeah. You know, we've always known that our pets were pretty intuitive or psychically inclined. But 
why are humans so far behind? We've got to be putting up a barrier somewhere, aren't we? Now, if you have re listened to uh, this whole series, you've heard that after 9-11, the magnetic field of the planet, the shield that protects us from the solar flares, the EMPs coming off from the CMEs of the sun, the shield is stronger when those things happen to us. Our emotions are high. When our emotions are high, the field of the, the earth is high. That has some bearing on what we're coming into. We are one. And when we are all excited for the same thing, that has a power. And we're gonna, I'm sorry, but we're gonna need to go through this slowly. Cause I'm just starting to put it together. This is the whole 2012 thing, baby. The power is in our hands. And here we go. Oh, and also, all these things that he's referring to were on a different show that uh, a dog with under uh, a camera in the house, when the owner gets a call to tell them to come home, the dogs know and they start moving. Some of them. Some of them, it's just before they start pulling in the driveway. Some of them, it's during that round. But they all have that connection. And that's a whole other show, which was awesome, which ended up with us being called randomly by four people in our contacts and us knowing more than statistically what we should know as far as who's going to call. But let's go back to the show. Well, it's, it's, it, perhaps it's, um, you know, the uh, a more highly developed cerebral cortex. Perhaps we rely more on... Uh, um, Hello, Mr. Our five ordinary senses, and we've uh, somewhat forgotten about our other abilities. I think that uh, I have a whole chapter on historical evidence, and uh, I have a lot of striking examples of human beings using these abilities to do quite remarkable things. Give me one. Um, well, it depends. Would you like one from uh, the ancient world? Would you like one from the Second World War? Or would you like one from Zulus? How about... The Second World War. Okay. Churchill. Here's one I wrote about called Churchill's Close Call. <clears throat> I'm reading from my book here. In her autobiography, Lady Churchill recalled that after a tour of inspection he made during the Blitz of London, Winston Churchill was about to get into a staff car on the near side, as he always did, when for no apparent reason he stopped and got, in, and got into the other side of the car instead something Lady Churchill had never known him to do before. While being driven back, a bomb fell near the car. Oh, my. Lifting it up on its two near side wheels. Had Churchill been sitting on that side as usual, the car would have turned over. Only Winston's extra weight had prevented disaster, Lady Churchill said. Later, when asked by his wife why he had changed his mind getting into the car, Churchill said that something made him stop in a way that told him he was meant to sit on the other side. Churchill said, I sometimes have a feeling, in fact I have it very strongly, a feeling of interference, he told a gathering of miners later in the war. I have a feeling sometimes that some guiding hand has interfered. End of quote. That's a great story. And you know what, I, I bet we can cite hundreds if not thousands of episodes that have happened to people where they were saved. They, you know, I talk about one with me, Chris, and in terms of going through a four intersection, and uh, I stopped at a green light because something told me not to go through the intersection, and when I stopped, somebody had gone through their red light. They would have smashed right into me. I have no idea what triggered me to do that. It hasn't happened then. It hasn't happened uh, ever but this one time. But something was so compelling in me, it kept saying, stop, don't go through, just don't go through, and I and I stop. There's, there's something there that gives us that. I'm just wondering, do you think it's biological, part of the brain, or is it truly part of the subconscious? Hmm, difficult to say. Um, or both. 
Well, I think it may very well involve some aspects of our brain. Um, it does seem to be, uh, at least real life size, seems to just happen. It uh, does seem to be largely self-conscious. But uh, there are some people who will try to um, make themselves more receptive, shall we say, to, uh, to, to using these abilities. Chris, part of your website uses the word the skeptics. So when we come back in just a moment here on Coast to Coast AM, I want to ask you what that all means. How skeptical can the skeptics really be? If you need to email me, that's animals in the SP. All right, kids. I'm going to wrap this up now because uh, I think that's about the end of my time. I just wanted to uh, let you know that um, if you notice, I'm letting you see how I drive because you are all going to be driving very soon, uh, if not already. And uh, sometimes you got to understand, you don't always have to hit your brakes. If you step off the gas a little bit and coast uh, and use a minimal amount of fuel, you'll actually slow down. That's called uh, gravity and momentum, and there's all kinds of important information there that you'll hopefully be learning in school. And uh, you put it into real world scenario. I look at these books to see where the wires are in the ground, and then I have to go out there and see what, how that translates into the real world. That's what this is all about. This, the connection to nature uh, is what's gonna save it. I mean, we are going down a dangerous path. Obviously, if your eyes are open in the least, uh, you'll see things are happening. You know, the girls upstate because of the hydrofracking that got autism, and you know, we just had people die. God rest their souls. Uh, I don't know if it was tonight or last last night. I mean, uh, you know, today or last night. But um, Illinois, three dead from a tornado, a bunch of tornadoes, 12 people dead altogether, cement buildings collapsing. I mean, there is a change going on, and, uh, you know, life, life will always exist, uh, hopefully, but um, that doesn't mean that we're going to make it, personally. So, uh, we need to get together, and we need to uh, prepare for the worst, and hopefully we'll have the best. All right? Here's to a, a beautiful... Uh, 2012, whether it be uh, the last year of your life or the last day of your life, uh, I hope it's neither. Uh, have a great day. We love you guys. Bye-bye.